Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, in in our reality, I like to talk about our reality versus the listener's reality. In our reality, um, because that's how time works. In our reality, Ohio State was just uh, declared the inaugural. Is that the is that is that a okay word to use in this case? Does that still work if it's a if it's a week and not a year? First of the week, first of the year, yeah. first week. Uh, words, words are tough sometimes. Point is, Ohio State's yeah. number one in the college football playoff. It's not a bad day. People calling this homers. We we were putting Ohio State as number one. Uh, ever since they beat Penn State, uh, we were putting Ohio State number one in our in our tier list. And hey, uh, Jared and Kyle, you're being homers. Stop being homers. Clearly, George is number one, Jared and Kyle. Yeah, sure. Let's ignore the fact that Ohio State has two top ten wins. Oh, the, no, uh, where was Notre Dame? Notre Dame. I think they were exactly 10th, right? So there's two top 10 wins if we go by when they played. Two top 15 wins, according to the committee, at least. But Jared and Kyle, you're being homers. Well, the committee doesn't see that. I don't think all of the committee is homers, so. I mean, one of the guys on the committee is the AD for Michigan, so. Mm-hmm. ND was 12, really? That that feels well, like Yeah. I, I, I believe you. But Kyle, we're not here to talk about Ohio State. We're not here to talk about the College Football Playoff Committee. We're not here to talk about Notre Dame or Michigan. We're here to talk about Rutgers. Kyle, this is... Guys, please don't turn the episode. I Yes, I know I said we're here to talk. Please don't turn it off. Please don't turn. Please don't turn it off, guys. Please don't turn it off. Fifteenth. Notre Dame was fifteenth when we played. Oh, when we played. No, oh. that was a top ten. That was a top ten. They were. Yeah, they're fifteen now. Yeah, they're absolutely fifteen now. I was I was talking about when they played. Uh, yeah, they were like seven. Yeah, I think so. They're like seventh or sixth or something. It does, like that. Guys, it doesn't matter. We're not. We're still not talking about Notre Dame. That's still not what we're doing right now. <laughs> eight, eight. Either way, they were right, eight. Rutgers. Know your enemy, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Jared. <laughs> here, here, here's here's my proposition for Rutgers. Change your name to the Black Knights. That, that's it. That's 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 it. If it's a single Scarlet Knight, is it a Rutger? That is that. That's the important question, Kyle. Let's dedicate the next 40 minutes to that question. Let's not say we did. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Rutgers here coming into this game. The only two losses, Jared. This is a Rutgers sick. And no, this isn't September. We're talking about where, oh, they, they're three and two. Oh, well, they're four yeah. and two. No, they're they're six and two going into November. Rutgers. So let's and, and like if we take a look at their schedule. First three games, they beat Northwestern. Now at the time, it's just like, OK, yeah, Northwestern's fresh off of their scandal. Yada, yada, yada. But, you know, Northwestern's four and four right now, which if you haven't. If you haven't been paying attention is what Clemson is right now, too. So really, if you think Northwestern at four and four is having is a bad team, well, then your expectations are just too high. That's a that's a that's a dab out joke for everybody. So to, yeah, then to, they beat Temple. To, OK, good job. Beat Temple. Then they beat Virginia Tech. Now, at the time. We didn't really think much of a Virginia Tech win. Yeah, but but Virginia Tech's not a bad football team. It turns out Clemson as, will be as, four uh, and five on Saturday. Woof! I didn't even as, include as, as that. I didn't even include Notre Dame Clemson in the sloop picks. 
That's how irrelevant Clemson is right now. Austin Wood uh, likes to say uh, Clemson's so mid. Clemson's Clemson, mid. Clemson. I mean, they're they're four and four. They're the definition of mid. Mm hmm. All right. Then they yeah, turned around they, and got stomped by Rutgers. By Michigan. Excuse me. Rutgers, Rutgers turned around and got stomped, by, stomped by Michigan. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> probably. Now, it should be said that 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 31 to seven. Not. Not terrible. I mean, they were it was it was a decent game at halftime. It, it was 14. Yeah, it was 14 to seven halftime. Then then Michigan went into the half, made some adjustments. Wink. Nod like they did against Bowling Green. <laughs> made some adjustments. Where's, where's, my, where's my shades at? Where, where are your shades, Kyle? Do your shades also record? Um, this little blue light that shines just. I don't I don't know if that I don't I, I don't know if that rumor is real or not, but I love it. Who cares if it's real at this point? Yeah, I know. This thing just living this thing just is alive and continuing to evolve and it's beautiful. Then they beat Wagner. Yeah, they, 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 yep. Uh then they lost to Wisconsin in a close game. Mm-hmm. Now losing to Wisconsin in a close game. I'm not going to fault them for that. I'm more upset by the fact that they beat Michigan State in a close game. How, how are how are you letting Michigan State stick around? Indiana, they, they win a decent game against Indiana. Now it's time for Ohio State. And uh, yeah, how, how do you think how do you think Rutgers is going to fare against Ohio State, Kyle? Uh like like the other nine times <laughs> <laughs> is it a grand total of nine is that the grand total uh i believe it is grand, is is that the is that the career yeah. nine and O? Oh? is that the career mm -hmm. record it is yes. these are two so of the it, oldest it, football programs in college football how how how, how have they only played nine times all of all of those since Rutgers joined the Big Ten. Wild. The, I'm, I'm trying to look at the closest game, the closest game there ever that's, was, Jared. That, that's that's a good. I want to know that. I, I would like to know the answer to this question. What was the closest well, you, game? You can see you can see there in that graph there. Um, so that was oh, I guess I didn't I didn't clip the bottom. Uh, so that would have been in 2020. Our state won 49 to 27. A 22 point victory for the Buckeyes. Okay, hold so on. Last year, Ohio State. Last year, Ohio State won by 39. Yeah. Uh, the year before that, in uh, Piscataway, 52 to 13. So you're saying the closest loss? And I'm saying this because we're talking about Rutgers today. The closest loss for Rutgers against Ohio State was 22 points. The current spread is 18.5. But to be fair, Jared, to be fair, this is the best Rutgers team is, Ohio State has ever played. There you go. This is this is the best Rutgers team. Uh, since, since joining the Big Ten. Uh, I mean, that's saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this I mean, is. But, but, this is the best Rutgers team since the last time Greg Schiano got Rutgers going. Well, you know, it's, it's not a bad, this is not a bad Rutgers team. Um, here, here's a fun exercise, Kyle. Where would you rank if we take a look at Ohio State's schedule? Where would you rank Rutgers within our past opponents. So we're, we're not talking about any of the games that haven't happened yet. Okay. 
So the toughest game Ohio, the, the toughest team Ohio State has played to this point is, I, I don't, I don't feel like arguing. Let's just say Notre Dame or Penn State. Okay. Well, if you're if we're going to go off the CFP, it's Penn State. But okay. So then you know Notre Dame, Penn State, one and two. I, I don't care about the order. Uh, I would say the third toughest team they've played is Wisconsin. Yes, easily. Yes. And then Maryland. Yep. Then I put Maryland and then Indiana. Well, but I, I would put I would put Rutgers above Indiana. So f- no teams who they played so far. Right, right, right. But, but I'm asking where do we slot Rutgers in? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we would slide them in there right under Maryland. But to be fair, Rutgers does have a better record than Maryland. So does Rutgers go above Maryland? Well, part of the reason why Maryland has a worse record than Rutgers is because Maryland has played Ohio State. Rutgers hasn't yet. If we're being fair. Rutgers has a better defense than Maryland. They do. They, did you know? Did you yes. know? Did you know, Jared? Did you know? Statistically wise, statistically, yeah, Rutgers has a top ten defense. Um, by what metric are you getting that? I'm not seeing a top ten. Top twenty, sure. I'm not. I'm not sure where you're getting top ten. Let me find it. According um, over over at I gotta find where where they actually pulled this up, but uh it was eleven warriors that, that posted that. They said that Rutgers ranks in the top ten nationally nationally in total defense. Okay. So what I here are the numbers I have. Opponents points per game, they allow seventeen. Point six, which ranks them 16th yards per game at 302, which ranks them 13th uh, points per play ranked 13th opponent yards per play at 11th. At see, how do they have 278 yards per game and I have 302 yards per game? Uh, oh, I know why. I'm my cur- my my stats don't count Wagner. FCS schools. That's that's so Wagner. Yep. Right. My 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 stats don't count in FCS schools. That's it's- that's that's the difference. All right, but you know, uh, whatever. Close enough. Close enough. Maybe they're thirteenth. Maybe they're ninth. Whatever. It's the same basic thing, right? Yep. Um, yep. So Rutgers is a good defensive football team. They are Mm -hmm. especially a good and and I'm not saying that their rush defense is bad. Not saying that Uh, opponent yards per rush, 39th in the country Um, opponent rush yards per game, 40th in the country. Solid, not bad. It's solid. Yes. Yes. Where they shine is in the passing defense. This is, by the way, is literally the same thing I was saying last week about Rutgers or excuse me, about Wisconsin. Their run defense is above average. But their pass defense is really good. This is literally the exact same thing that I was saying about Wisconsin last week. And for what it's worth, um, Rutgers has played better offenses. For what it's worth, Rutgers has played much better offenses than Wisconsin had played to that point. Mm -hmm. Michigan's a better offense. And. um, Nah, okay. well, Michigan's a better offense. (laughs) Michigan's a better offense. Um, Uh, This is ludicrous, by the way, scoring defense, the top three, all Ohio State or excuse me, all Big Ten with Ohio State at number two. Um, And this isn't the Big Ten rankings. That's not that is nationally. 
the question might start to become, uh, can no one in the Big Ten play offense? I mean, realistically, that starts to become the question after a minute, right? I mm. mean, I'm just saying from a statistical standpoint, from a meta, from a meta statistical analysis, a meta analysis of statistics, it might be the better way of saying that. Um, t- sounds like 2005 Big Ten. Y- you are not wrong, Zach. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, back, back on track. Back on track. Rutgers very good pass defense. Um, they hold their opponents to a 55 percent completion percentage, which ranks them 12th in the country. And by the way, the most important passing stat, in my opinion, is this opponents yards per pass yards per attempt. They only allow 5.3 yards per attempt. That's a good running defense. Yeah. Let alone passing defense. And that ranks them third in the country. And it's not teams have passed the ball a lot against Penn State. They're 84th in the country in uh, passes against and passes attempts. What did I say? Penn State. God damn it. (laughs) Rutgers. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yes. To 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 that point too. the amount of um, the amount it says here. uh, Oh, no, I I read that wrong. My bad. Never mind. Um, Either way, though. Yeah, they. The, the numbers here, though, shows that Rutgers defense, especially the defensive backs, are very solid. And they and lead, leading that uh, leading the defensive backs there is uh, Max Melton. So I think we're going to see a lot of uh, Max Melton going to be. I would assume that he's going to be following uh, Marvin Harrison around. Uh, he's. He's a very, very solid defensive back. So I'm really, really curious to see how well he can attempt to try to stop Marvin Harrison because it seems like no one can so far this season. Yeah. Um, And as good as the passing defense is for Rutgers, they're passing offense. Woof. (laughs) Um, Woof. Maryland's quarterback, mm-hmm. Wimstat is his name. <laughs> Zach, good? No, not good. Um, Wimstat's a runner. He he's a runner. That, I mean that that's who he is. Uh, he's the second leading rusher on the team, and by the way, rushing for five yards per carry. And that's with 42 yards lost in sack this year. So take the sacks out. He's probably, I think he has the highest per carry average on the team. Maybe I'm not going to do the math, but excellent runner. Just, he's not, he's not a very good thrower. It is what it is. Um, he, he is throwing basically almost exactly 50% for the year. And that that's with Wagner and some other teams in there to boost that average up a tad. Yeah. Wimstad statistically statistically here for Rutgers offense, they're rushing rushing play percentage. 61 percent and i'm rounding up 61 percent of the time they are calling rushing plays so 39 percent of the time is um passing the ball yeah they 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 only they only pass the ball 39 if ohio Ohio state can get up a couple scores and force rutgers to throw the ball they're they're screwed if if i was ohio state here if i was ohio state i'm i just i just i'd play one i'd play one back just play one safety you play the other safety up you you pretty much you pretty much force uh wimsat to try to beat you over the top 
And, and no, no one has. No one has so far this season against Ohio State. No one's thrown it over the top. No. Uh, so I I would I would play I'd play just one back, put um yeah, just one safety back, bring uh styles up. Yeah, no forty yard plays, yeah. Place place styles up almost to that linebacker position there, almost running like a almost like a four four defense there. Four four. Yeah. Have um, well. two 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 DBs and then a, a safety there. I'd do that. I would do that. Yeah. Passing statistics. Um they only pass the ball, as Kyle already said, the other direction of this, uh, 39% of the time, which ranks them 121st in the country. Completion percentage, 127th in the country. Yards per pass, 107th in the country. Passing yards per game, 123rd in the country. Um, and with the severe lack of balls being thrown, Wimstat has still managed to throw uh, seven, excuse me, four interceptions on the year. Seven touchdowns, four interceptions, throwing the ball. Uh, in, in his defense, he does have an additional seven touchdowns running the ball. In his defense. Um, they and, and in case you're wondering... They they don't have at least an experienced guy behind him. Uh, if you're thinking, oh, well, maybe they got a guy who they can bring in and maybe be a little bit more pass focused if the game gets out of hand. Uh, there's a combined five attempts on the bench right now. Uh, five attempts for the year. I, I didn't look at previous years, but in layman's terms, they going to run that motherfucker. Yeah, they're going to try. And, 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 and Rutgers is it's, not good. Rutgers is not going to win this game doing doing that. They just won't. And everyone thank Indiana for surprise running a triple option uh, in week one. So Ohio State has has seen the running quarterback before. Um, so yeah, it's 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 going to be it's going to be one of those games. And for what it's worth, this was. If you look at the Penn State game and the Wisconsin game, both of those teams leading running backs had a really good per carry average. And well, in the case of Penn State, anyway, uh, I feel like Franklin messed up by not continuing to run the ball. Um, Wisconsin lost their guy, so mm -hmm. they didn't really so, have a whole lot. So, of. So talking about rushing the ball, yes, uh, I'm going to see Wims at running the ball here. Uh, what, what is it here? He's already rushed 73 times. Jared's mentioned five yards of carry, 362 yards so far this season. So who's the other guy? Um, Kyle Manunga is the other guy. 744 yards, 5.2 yards per carry. And seven touchdowns for the season as well. He's a He's a really good running back, surprisingly. Yeah. Like he's like me prepping for for this uh for this recording here, looking at some of the highlights. Uh, yeah, he could pretend he has the potential to break one if Ohio State's not careful. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think we'll see a heavy dose of uh Manungai, heavy dose of Wimsat trying to run it there, trying to do some trying to do some um uh, read options there, but full faith in this uh, defensive line, and it's going to really going to come down to the linebackers, in my opinion, in this game here. Linebackers got to read those reads, uh, make sure that they have the right personnel covering the running back, and then somebody spying the quarterback as well too, in case he he tucks it in and runs with it. You're gonna have to play very disciplined in this game. There you go. That's that's the word discipline. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they don't typically go uh, to their second running back or their third running back too often. Benjamin only has uh, 43 carries on the year. So, yeah, it, it should primarily be those two running the ball. 
Uh, wide receivers, as you can probably figure out listening to what we were saying before, um, you know, there, there's not. I, I, I don't want I don't want to disrespect the wide receivers. It's it's just uh, pretty clear that Rutgers is having trouble getting the ball to them. So mm, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how good Dremel or Jackson or Washington actually are. Uh, if I'm being super honest with everybody, I just know that the passing game in general has been very dysfunctional for uh, for Rutgers this year. Harrison, Harrison, and heck, heck, you can just put uh, uh, Emeka in there too. Those two combined have more reception yards than Wimsat's thrown it. There you go. Um, yeah. And heck, 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 Cade Stover has more receptions, yard, reception yards, and tied for touchdowns than uh, their, than Rutgers leading receiver, Dremel. They're having trouble throwing the ball in New Jersey, I think is, I think is the point. <laughs> yes. But uh, as I said, they are very, very, very good at on the pass defense side. So, and it, it appears yeah. to mostly be the secondary. Uh, Rutgers is not a high sack team for what it's worth. Um, they they do have a lot of pass breakups, including a lot of pass breakups um, from uh, all over the place. Uh, Jennings has a bunch. Dixon has a bunch. Um Longer beam has a bunch. Melton has a bunch. Uh, Rogers has a bunch. Um, this is a, a very strong secondary for Rutgers. Um, I was about to say that they haven't played a wide receiving core like Ohio State all year, but who has? Um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if it'll be interesting to see how they how they shape up against Ohio State. Um, they haven't played any sort of pass defense or excuse me, pass offense this year. Um, I mean, they haven't even like, so they haven't even played Maryland yet. Um, you know, if we're just trying to look for some sort of comp to what Ohio state's passing offense can do. Um, they just haven't played it yet this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean the the story the story in this game here. I know I mentioned about linebackers versus what the dual threat with uh, Manungai and Wimsat, but it's got to be it's going to be Ohio State offense. Can can they can they put up the production here, which they've struggled in recent games here? Now, granted, they play tougher opponents here, but that's. That's something you got to keep an eye out for. There's been just some inconsistency with, with the offensive line with McCord. Right. Can they fight? Can they finally get that together? Can they start scoring scoring points again here? The least amount of points in this series uh, is forty nine points. Forty nine points. Can can Ohio State score forty nine points uh, against Rutgers this year? My my. No, my my gut my gut instinct is no. I'd take I'd take the under on that. Heck, I'd I'd probably take the under at um, I'd probably set I'd probably set it like at thirty five and a half. Yeah, um, I don't know how much Ohio State is looking to put up big points this year. Um, Ryan Day has been very happy to run the ball late in games and sort of get out of games. Um, That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I, I thought I had this stat somewhere. I might not. Ohio State's time of possession is enormous this year. Like I've never seen Ohio State's time of possession before. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the new clock rules. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the defense is getting them the ball back very quickly. Um, That's it. And a lot of it has to do with Ohio State being just okay enough running the ball. <laughs> um, Spike says probably just trying to get out. 
of there without another injury. Yeah, it's it's been yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, la- that, last year was an what, especially rough year for injuries, and this year hasn't been great either. But yeah, well, and we just got word uh, today, Jared, that Jose is going to be for the rest of the year without uh, without one of their running backs here. Yeah, uh, Mayan Williams out Chip, for the rest of the year. Um, chop. Yep, chop, chops out, chops out for the rest of the year there. Yeah, uh, it, with a what they're saying is just a uh, knee injury, which he's going to be undergoing a season ending surgery for that. Yeah. Oh, so Ryan Day said that, yeah, the procedure is done. He's just in recovery mode right now out for the season here. Which it goes without saying sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I don't know. Kyle, is there anything else on Rutgers you want to talk about? Um, leading pass rushers on the team are uh, defensive linemen Lewis and Bailey. Um, yeah, I I, I, re- I really think the heart of this of this Rutgers defense is the DBs. I mentioned Melton, yeah. but the other DB to keep an eye out for is a uh, longer beam. Uh, he actually leads the team in pass deflections. Yeah. Uh, don't really see too many tackles from either of them, and that's usually a good sign a good from a defensive back standpoint. <laughs> well, from a cornerback uh, standpoint, it is. Yeah, but but yeah, no, I don't I don't got much more about it. So I guess we can go into our our predictions. Unless you have anything else. No. Um, again, I want to I, I, I do want to maybe wrap things up a tad as far as this section of the show. Rutgers has a very good pass defense. Mm-hmm. I w- I'm going to say it again. Rutgers has a very good pass defense. So when, when Ohio State isn't just throwing the ball all over the yard. Don't be uh, but it's Rutgers. This is again, and I already said this, but this is again. A very good pass defense. And this is, again, the best, the best Rutgers team Ohio State has ever played. Is that a low bar? Yes, it is. Should Ohio State still win this game somewhat easily? Yes, they should. But if you're expecting a classic Ohio State Rutgers game that ends in 59 to 10. Nice. Then. This isn't going to be that game. Uh, but also forget that I said that when we do the score predictions here in a minute, um, cause the bit is important and we stick to the bit. Um, Marv will have 160 yards and two touchdowns. Um, I, I, Marv, I mean, Marv. honestly, it's wouldn't be shocking. I, I would, I wouldn't predict 160 yards. I would have it Mar- probably Mar- more like 120. St- Marv's had six 100 plus yard games in his last seven. Yeah. He he sure does. OK, Kyle, is it time for our predictions? Let's do it. Ohio State player to watch. Who do you got, Jared? I say player to watch is Tyleek Williams. Um, as stated, this is a game in which Rutgers is going to try to run the ball a lot. And I, I don't care what fancy crap you're doing behind the line of scrimmage, what deceit you're doing behind the line of scrimmage. If, if you if Ohio State's defensive tackles, if Tyleek Williams and Mike Hall get in there and disrupt and push back and just make the interior of the Rutgers offensive line uh, make their life a living hell, then it kind of doesn't matter what you know what the running back or what the quarterback is doing. If you start with that push up front, it's game over. Yeah. I'm going with the opposite side. I'm going to go with the guy who brought this, brought the spark back on the offense last weekend against Wisconsin here. The guy who had over 200 all purpose yards against Wisconsin. 
I'm going with Chisel. I'm going with Trey. Trey Hundo. I, uh, I think I think that with with how good of a pass defense this uh, this Rutgers team is, and kind of to your point you mentioned earlier, Ryan Day's kind of sticking to the run game for better or worse, and that. I think that's what we're going to see in this game. I think Ohio State's going to run the ball more. I think Marvin Harrison's uh, streak, he's on a f- uh, five-game streak of having 100 yards in a game. I think I think that may be in jeopardy here just because of how much Ohio State's going to run the ball. So I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to go with Trey for my Ohio State player to watch. Yep, and exactly. The next one is Enemy, who is Rutgers player to watch. I'm going to go with one of the DBs. I got I got Melton. Melton yeah. is most likely going to be the guy to guard Marvin Harrison. And is he going to be the one guy that finally is able to reduce the the uh <laughs> Yeah, just trying to prevent Marv from getting loose, trying to trying to stop the bleeding, so to speak. Is he going to be that guy? I I, th- I think it's I think it's going to depend on how often will Ohio State actually pass more yeah. more so than more so than Melton actually Melton actually stopping Marvin Harrison. But I think it's also dependent upon Emeka Buka's status. Um. Which too. we we thought he was going to play last week and he didn't. So I'm not even going to try and make a prediction as far as what a Mecca book is going to do this week. Um, but, you know, in the Notre Dame game, Ohio State mostly used Marv as a as a decoy. And then it was just a Mecca Buka and Cade Stover ripping things up underneath. So, you know, with a Mecca Buka out, Marv's numbers has, have gone up significantly in that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is yours, Jared? Uh, I'm going with the obvious one. I'm going with uh, Wimsat. Um, he I, he's a dynamic player, um, and by damn it, by dynamic, I mean with his feet. <laughs> um, he's he's the leader of the offense, for better or worse. Um, the running game works because of him. When you see what Rutgers has been able to achieve on the ground, it is largely because of Wimsat. Of course, it's a it's a team game, and running the ball especially is a team game, of course. But uh, Ohio State hasn't played a like rush first running back, or excuse me, a rush first quarterback. Uh, potential. I mean, you could probably say since Indiana. Um. But Wimsat's a better runner, for what it's worth. So it might be one of their since Youngstown State. Yeah, that's a good point. But once again, I don't think they've played an athlete quite like uh, Wimsat yet this year, as as far as their running quarterback yeah. goes. Um, yep. So it'll be a new, unique challenge for the Ohio State defense. They've primarily been playing against pocket passers recently, so it, it's going to be a switch up for them. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Not that maybe two is a to pocket our... passer, but he is a thrower. You know what I'm saying. Right. Moving on to our key matchup here. Kind of I kind of um pointed this out earlier. Uh I got the linebackers and w- versus Wimsat rushing the ball. Yeah. I Jared Jared's Jared's word of uh, being disciplined, I think, is fitting for the linebackers. They got to be disciplined here, not watch where the ball's going, not not necessarily what the what the offensive line is doing, but watch where the ball is going. Oh, that's, that's the opposite sure. of what that's the opposite of what they're supposed to do. Well, so, to... well sometimes no, so, sometimes sometimes it, it, it's you're to... sometimes it's misleading. Sometimes I, it's I misleading. Know, but you're, you're you're supposed to key off the offensive line. Well, oh, you need to be disciplined. <laughs> need to be disciplined. Keep an eye on Wimsat and reduce reduce the uh, the amount of times he's able to break loose here. 
Yep. Do uh, we finally have a prior sighting? <sighs> no. I love you, Zach. But you know the answer to that. No. Um, you know, we, we, we lose Chop, but Chip and Jizzle are both ready to go. Mm-hmm. I would say next year, yeah. Um, Ohio State potentially lose Chip Chop and Chisel at the end of the year. So did I say it backwards? Well, just pretend I said it the right way. All right, Jared, if I said it backwards, matchup? just pretend I said it the right way. Uh, key matchup, uh, I've already been keying on this, but it's the Ohio State defensive tackles versus the Rutgers interior offensive line. Um it's all about that push. It's all about penetrating the interior of the line and then nothing that the Rutgers running backs or quarterback do at that after that matter. If the defensive tackles can be disruptive or at least eat up a ton of blocks along the way, which frees up the linebackers to Kyle's point. So e- either freeing up the linebackers by forcing you know, a, a ton of attention from the offensive line or by, you know, penetrating and causing disruption before the play can even get started. It's all about the defensive tackles in this game. Um, I mean, the defensive ends will have something to say about that, too, of course, but it's all about the defensive tackles in this game. All right. All right. The spread in this game as we as uh, the CBS pick them, locked them in. Ohio State 18 and a half. I'm curious. I'm just going to look real quick to see if that line moved, and it hasn't at the time of recording this year. So 18 and a half point is the spread here. Yeah. I read a bunch of numbers earlier about the closest victory that Rutgers got was back in 2020, where Ohio State well, beat Rutgers by 22 points. The closest loss, not the closest victory. But yes, uh, Rutgers has never gotten within 21 points of Ohio State before, and the line is 18 and a half. Uh, if that's not an indicator, I don't know what is. Yeah, I got the Buckeyes. I got the Buckeyes covering in this game here. I just... History history is on the Buckeye side here, <laughs> so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that. And I got, I got the final score here, and I just look at your final score, Jared, and I'm not surprised. I got the final score of this game, Ohio State 35, Rutgers 14. Um, Spike which says will 31. Make it, which which. Which will make it the closest game that Rutgers has ever had against Ohio State. Okay. Uh, Spike says 31 to 7 seems right. For what it's worth, Spikes, and maybe you knew this when you said that, and maybe you don't, uh, that was the Michigan score against Rutgers. Um, I'm going 59 to 10. You did know that. That's I'm not surprised by that, Spikes. Um, 59 to 10. Do I think that's actually what's going to happen? Yes, I do. Is it just because of the bit? Maybe. And what was I lying on the first question? Yes. Yes, I was. Thank you for the nices in chat. Uh, the bit matters. I, 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 I hate, I hate that the new clock rules has ruined this bit. Or maybe it's made it better because it's more absurd now. I don't know. You tell me. All right. Um, who, who's our guest picker this week, Jared? Uh, we don't have a guest picker this week. All right. We are. All right. We will move on to <laughs> our Ask Sloopcast uh, questions here. And as always, Sp- Spikes is the guest picker. He said thirty-one to seven, uh, which. Uh, okay. <laughs> Congrats, Spikes! You're you're the guest picker this week. He says thirty-one to seven, uh, which is a cover. Let's roll. <laughs> All right. All right. We are going to move on to Austin's uh, over unders here for Rutgers. All right. We will go ahead and uh, 
run through these quickly here. And when I mean quickly, we will spend probably the next 20 minutes covering them. But we're moving on. Trey, scr Trey scrimmage yardage over under 131 and a half yards. Take the over. Yeah, I, this Rutgers game, I think, is going to be a um, slightly more, and I do mean slightly more, um, positive outcome version of the Rutgers game for Ohio State. Uh, I, I think it's it's just going to be a little, it's going to basically be the same game, but a, just a tiny bit better for Ohio State this week. Oh, and you said over? Yes. Yes, I did. All right. All right. Uh, the other running back here, um, uh, Kyle, great first name, uh, Manungai, scrimmage yards at 66 and a half. Man, that's... Mm. It's hard for me to take the over on that. Did you say it's a good number? I, I say that is a good number. I, I'm. Austin I think I'm going to go with say that. I think I think I'm going to take the over on this one just because of how much they're going to run the ball. So I I think I will take the over for Manungai rushing more than sixty six yards. Yeah, I think it's probably worth noting that he does say scrimmage yards. Um, but yeah, Mananga is not much of a pass receiver. Um, so I don't know how much of a, I don't know how much of a factor receiving yards is going to play into this. Um, but 66 feels low enough. And I think Rutgers is going to, I think they're going to, I think they're going to run the ball a lot. So I'm going to go over. I, I think it's a very good number. I think cool. it ends up being like 70 yards, 75 yards would be my prediction yeah i was thinking like 80s but either way ohio state sacks allowed ohio state has that that is another issue ohio state's had here one was, and a half it, it should be said yep one and a half one and a half sacks allowed here uh yeah ohio state has not done well at all uh so looking at the past few games here last game McCord was sacked four times, the most so far this season. Two against Penn State, two against Purdue, three against Maryland, and then one against Notre Dame, one against uh, Western Kentucky. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take the over here just based on what I've seen from the offensive line here, and if they're passing the ball and the defensive backs are have a good coverage and Kyle's taking longer to read the defense and to know where to throw it. it yeah, I, it's a tendency that we've seen with him, of course. I'll, I'll take the over for Ohio State allowing more than one sack in this game. Yeah, on, on, on one hand, Rutgers has a very good pass defense, as I've stated a thousand times to this point, which, on, which can force sacks. But at the same time, Rutgers is not a team that has put up a ton of sacks this year. I think 89th in the country in sacks. Um, well, they have one more sack than Ohio State does all year. That's different. Um, it's it's different for a bunch of reasons, but it's it's different. Um, but I, it's also worth, I'm I'm using sack percentage and. Okay. So that's sacks, sacks based off of the per passing attempt. And Rutgers had, uh, they don't pass, teams don't pass the ball too frequently against Rutgers. Um, I'm going to go over, but I think it's two. I think the number is two. Mm, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Tate plus X, Xavier touches. Six and a half. Uh, I'm going to go under with this one just because I think I think Ohio State will have success with with Trey running the ball and X X got his touches and rightfully so to try to spread out Wisconsin last weekend. Don't think they really need to do that this weekend. So I don't think we're going to see as many touches by Xavier. So I'll, I'll take the under. I agree. 
I think I'll move it on. I think you nailed that, Kyle. Okay. All right. Passes by an Ohio State quarterback who is not McCord at four and a half. Under. under. It, it should be like 0. 0.5. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I think I don't think Ohio State's going to blow out Gretkers. I don't think we. Yeah. Yeah. How Jennings and tour tackles at twenty one and a half. I'm going to go under with this and one. Just too. just just to just to back up, because I know I know I know Austin will be mad that we just sort of definitively said under. He what he's trying to say here is will Kyle McCord stay healthy the entire game, I think is what he's actually getting at there. But I'm 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 still gonna go under. Um Powell plus Jennings plus Tor tackles. Um 21 and a half. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go under just Oh, you're going to go over. Okay. I am. I, Ohio State's going to run the ball a lot. Um, and the, those are the the leading tacklers on the team. Those are the leading linebackers on the team. Uh, I think I think they'll rack up a bunch of tackles this game. All right. And last one here is Marv catches at seven and a half. Man, that just depends upon... That this question to me might as well be Will Abuka play? <laughs> yeah. Marv had six catches against Wisconsin. Then he had a career game again against Penn State with 11, six against Purdue, eight against Maryland, and three against Notre Dame. I'm going to go under. I'm still going to stick to my theme here. I say it's going to run the ball a lot. Less less opportunities to throw it to Marv here, so I'm, I'll go under. I, I know I'm not allowed to do this, so I'm, I am just gonna say I am just gonna say over as my official answer. But under if Abuka plays, over if he doesn't. Uh, but but your your stance is over. Then. Yes, yeah, I, I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, that, that's cheating. I'm not allowed to do that answer. So my official answer is over. All right. All right, Kyle. All right. Uh, that's it. That is. Yeah, I think I think that's it here. Um, unless unless we have uh, somebody, unless we have like a a no Tyler from Spartanburg on the line here. No. No, we don't do call-ins. Kabuto's question, do we have any additional Ask Sloopcast questions? I think Zach in particular really wants us to do a question from Kabuto. Yeah, we. That, that's the question that you asked earlier, Jared. Did I? Is a single Scarlet Knight called a Rutger? Oh, Austin stole that. Austin. Austin, did you steal... Did you steal Kabuto's joke? Um, is a single Scarlet Knight called a Rutger. Kabuto, for what it's worth, when Austin said it earlier, I thought it was very funny. He stole your joke, though. Or maybe you both stole it from the same place. I don't know. But he stole your joke. All right. Got it. Uh, everyone come join the discord server. We'll be watching football in the discord server this Saturday. Oh yeah. I don't know what time window yet, but we'll be doing it. Um, yeah. So come, come join the discord server. That's it. That's the, that's the whole, that's the whole story. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Discord dot the com. Discord dot the It's probably, it's probably a good idea if I actually tell people the address. Um, I think, I think that I think the big thing was with mine Williams out. I think that's probably the the big thing coming out of Ohio State the past uh, few days here. Uh, thought, thoughts thoughts on the just quick thoughts on the CFP rankings here, Jared. I did sure. that at the top of the show, didn't we? I think Washington's getting screwed. I think they absolutely deserve to be in the top four. Kyle and I on on Wednesday, with the day we're recording this, but we sh- yeah. Well, no, we're recording this on a Tuesday. 
but on Wednesday we're releasing, I'm really messing with my head here. Uh, you are. On Wednesday, we are releasing um, the Collegiate Chaos for, for this week. Um, and Kyle and I give you what we believe is our top four in that game, in that, in that show. And Kyle, we had, we had Washington three. We did. Uh, the college of all playoff committee has them at five, which is only two spots difference, but that is an important two spots. It is. Yeah. Um, so as it, so as it, as it lined up, you have, if it were to end today, you had Ohio state versus Florida state. And then you have Georgia versus Michigan. I quite frankly don't know how Florida State is, is number four. I, they're rewarding it's, Georgia and Michigan who have played nobody. Yeah, so I mean, I, w- I would go back. I would go based on looking at resume. I know Washington hasn't looked good the last couple of games here, but they have arguably Washington the best has, win of Washington the year. Washington has the best arguably. win against Oregon. Yeah. Maybe inarguable. Who, who is ranked sixth. And then Florida State's is LSU at 14th. Uh, and Ohio State beat Penn State at 10. 11. Whatever. Um, meanwhile, neither Georgia nor Michigan have beaten anyone that the College Football Playoff Committee ranked. Nobody. Zero. Yep. Oh, but they played Florida and, well, you know, Florida has famous laundry, so that should count for something, right? Never mind the fact yeah. that Florida is just painfully average this year. Anyway, guys, we talked about this in length on Collegiate Chaos, which was an episode we released on Wednesday of this week. Um, unrelated to the college football playoff, because we didn't we didn't see the college football playoff yet. The show's already recorded, but we tell you where we put everyone and why. So crew playoff right, game on Wednesday. Good luck. Yes, 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 yes. All right. That's yes, it. They do. Uh, that's the end of the episode. Tonight's ending music a band from Columbus called Girl Fox. Check them out. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Girl Fox.